Hey, driver. Yes, ma'am. Let's play a game. What would you do if you knew tonight was your last night on Earth? I'd definitely kill you. Finally, he bites back. Night Teeth, when he first mentioned it to me, he said it's a vampire thriller. But then we started to talk about how can we do something in this genre that surprises people and um, exceeds expectations. And um, in that conversation, you know, just like we had sort of elevated London back on a film called Level Up and on iBoy, it was like, well, what about Los Angeles? Because Los Angeles, you're starting with something beautiful. Like, I think it's a beautiful city. You've got, you've got the beach, you've got the city. There are so many sort of different looks and it's such a cinematic city. But what if we applied our same philosophy of let's elevate it, let's bring some Tokyo color to it and make it our Los Angeles. So you can get away with being a bit more fantastical. I think inherently, when it comes to lighting, I'm always looking for a natural motivation. What I wanted to do on this was, okay, let's create our Los Angeles where our Los Angeles has these heightened colors built in practically. So maybe the streetlights aren't the kind of modern LED streetlights that you see in Los Angeles now. They're the old school sort of sodium ones. And let's use things like billboards to wash color down streets. So we're not just kind of um, thoughtlessly throwing green light down a street. There's a, a motivation for it in camera, in shot. So it kind of just makes this world that's heightened and fantastical and colorful, but it's still kind of grounded in its own reality. We kind of came up with this idea of um, neon noir. <laughs> um, so high contrast imagery, really leaning into deep blacks and really trying to enrich this world with sort of neon and bright, um, fantastical colors. We really could get our head around the entire story and plot out a color journey, a visual journey, so that we, we tease elements at the very beginning. We then have a little bit of daylight when we get to meet Benny and let's really make the most of that daylight and really make the sun feel like a really hot, warm character because it comes back later at the end of the film. And then when it comes to the night, let's let's have this rabbit hole journey where Benny goes down this rabbit hole and finds himself in all these incredible locations. And let's make sure each one is kind of visually signposted as its own area with its own theme and its own colours. And there was a very sort of clear plan visually with, with regards to colour. There's a lot of conversations about what, you know, what is the costume? Because that costume has to hold up to all of these sets, to all of these colours. And we had the idea to, to make the most of that, to lean into that as an opportunity. Let's make them shiny, for want of a better word. So rather than, you know, matte or, or darker things, we, we wanted... We wanted textures and colors that reflected light. So our costume designer was amazing at, at coming up with all kinds of ideas that subtly reflected light. Whichever location they were in, wherever they were, whatever was happening, basically the color from my lighting and the set would sort of bleed onto them and would reflect off of them. Kind of like glitter, like, like a disco ball. I think it's an adventure film. It's a bit of a thriller, but actually it's, it's almost in the kind of Amblin adventure thing. It's characters who are out of their comfort zone, into this adventure, meeting dangerous characters. So we sort of thought by combining on the camera and lenses side, that kind of 70s, 80s anamorphic aesthetic with quite sort of modern, colourful neon lighting, we would probably end up with our own thing. We had to have anamorphic, no matter what. I did want that sort of large format, shallow focus, modern feel in that way. So then when it came to lenses, it was Simon Surtees mentioned these Cadwell chameleons. He just had one lens available, it's a 50 mil. And we loved the idea of being able to sort of center frame Benny on this 50 mil, really wide anamorphic lens, but with really shallow focus. And as he's taking in something in the foreground, crazy stuff's happening behind him. We actually did that as two separate shots. Um, so he, we shot uh, at 48 frames. So he has a sort of subtle slow motion thing happening, whereas the girls behind him are in real time. And that lens just gave us that look. It, I really felt like it gave us the kind of 70s, 80s anamorphic aesthetic. It has beautiful distortion and flares, but it also had the sort of solidity and contrast and color from a modern lens. So as soon as we sort of saw someone standing in on that 50, it was like, that's it. That's the film. That's the look. I think it's brave what you're doing. Stepping out on your own like this. I think I've done five projects in HDR now, and every project to this point, I had um, shot SDR on set and and you know done the post, done the color work in SDR, 
and then converted to HDR. So we just very early on said to Netflix, let us shoot it the best we can in HDR for you. And they were so supportive. Our, our brilliant DITs, um, both in New Orleans and in LA, came up with a system where we had an SDR and HDR side by side. We had Jill Bogdanovich at Company 3, came up with this very sort of cinematic luck, and it had to work in HDR and SDR. So we did loads of testing. Um, and my my whole approach to, to Dolby Vision, to, to HDR, is that we had a kind of HDR cutoff at about 70% brightness. That was kind of where it sat at, at our peak. And then we saved 70% and above as a kind of special effect. And Ari have been so supportive just throughout my career. I think they really actually care about me and my career and, and my crew. And if we need something, they're going to get it for us. What is wrong with you? You can't be alive for 200 years and not go a little crazy. Mm -hmm.